So I've never been much of a fan of using a Git interface like the GitHub desktop app or Turtle because they're all missing some sort of basic feature, whether that be merging or cherry picking or working with remotes. And by doing that, they're basically pushing you towards working with a specific workflow. Now, Git UI is no different, but it has a very, very clean interface. And if you want to be using Git from your terminal and you don't want to have to remember commands, maybe trying out Git UI is going to be a good idea. So this is what it actually looks like. So we have four tabs in here. We have the status tab, we have the log tab, we have the stashing tab, and we have the stashes tab. And the status tab is where most of the work is going to get done. So let's say that we wanted to stage this folder right here. We wanted to stage this file right here. So let's go down to the staging area. And let's say that we actually don't want to stage this file, but we want to stage the other file in here. So we can go and remove this one from the staging area. And then let's actually go and commit these. So we can go and actually write a commit message. Let's say this is a commit Give it a second and there we go. Now we've actually gone and committed that. So if we go back to the log now, as you're going to see, this is a commit. So the way that I actually did that is pretty straightforward. So let's go back to the unstaged changes. So this screen right here is broken down into three sections. We have the unstaged changes section, the staged changes and the diff. So to get into unstaged changes, regardless of which other screen you're on, on this window, you go and press it W. And to get into stage changes, you go and press S. Okay, so in here, the way that we actually go and stage something, let's say that we want to stage this one right here. So if we want to stage this, we can either specifically select this file or we can go further up the tree. So if we select it from, say, the GIMP folder, basically everything that is a child of GIMP is going to be staged. Or if we go up to the config folder, everything that is a child of config is going to be staged. And in this case, that's going to be every single thing. So I go and press enter on this. And as you can see, that goes and stages everything. So let's go and remove this back out of the staging area the same way we got it in there by pressing enter on it after we moved into the stage changes. And let's say we just want to go and add everything. So we can go and add everything as you saw by pressing enter on the root of the tree but there is also a dedicated key to add everything and that is done with the A key. So A is for stage all. And if we go into the staging area now, we can remove everything by obviously pressing enter on the root of the tree or we can also unstage all by pressing A again. And let's say that we realize we want to reset some of our changes. So let's say that in our Caden Live RC file, we realized, okay, we made some sort of mistake or for whatever reason, we want to reset it to what currently exists actually saved inside of Git. Well, the way that we go and reset something is by pressing capital D on it, and it's gonna give us a prompt here. So down the bottom here, you can see that it says confirm is enter and close is exit. So let's go and press enter on this. And there you go. Now it's actually been removed from unstaged changes. And if we go and run Git status from outside of this app, so let's go into the repos directory into dot files and run Git status. As you can see, that file is no longer in the list of files that have been changed. So basically, it's gone and reset it to whatever was last saved inside of Git. Okay, so what if we say we want to add something to our Git ignore? So obviously, we can go and actually edit our Git ignore ourselves, but there is a way to actually go and add it from Git UI. So let's say that we want to ignore this file right here. So if I go and press I on this, Basically, it's gone and modified our git ignore file. And as we can see in here, it's added the line config slash pcmanfm slash default slash pcmanfm.conf. And this file is now going to be ignored by git. And if we actually want to go and remove that line, there isn't a way to do that directly from git UI, but we can actually go and edit a file from this application. So if I go and press E on this, it's going to open it up in our editor and let's just remove the line. So then if we go and save this, as you can see, it still says that something has changed, but that's because this repo didn't actually have a git ignore in it. If you had removed that file and you already had a git ignore, basically it would actually go and remove this from our unstaged changes. So you can probably see that there isn't a key list to actually go over to this window right here, but we can still see that some things are going to be too big to directly show on the screen. So the way that we actually get over to our diff window is we just press the right arrow key and that's going to actually take us into that. So we can go and scroll through this now 
and basically it's just a diff. Nothing too special about it. You can see everything that's changed in the file, everything that's been added, everything that's been removed, and you can see each of the individual hunks. So while we're actually in this screen, if you want to go and stage a hunk, basically you can go and select the hunk you want to use. So in this case, we are on this hunk right here, and we can go and press enter on this. And as you can see, that hunk has now been added into our stage changes. And we can go and add another hunk. So let's add this one here. And if we go over to the stage changes now, so we can get there by pressing S, as we will see in here, we have this hunk staged and this hunk staged, but we don't have the rest of the file staged. So like with before, we can go and remove this from our staged area by just pressing enter on it. And as you can see, now it's been removed from the staging area. But we can also go and just reset a single hunk as well. So let's say that we are, I don't know, don't need, let's go with a file that isn't going to be super dangerous if I change it. Let's go with this one. Let's say that we don't need whatever's been changed in this hunk here. So if I go and press capital D on this, it's going to say, okay, do you want to reset this? And I'm going to say, yes, let's go and reset that. And as you can see, because that was the only hunk in that file, basically it's gone and removed it from our unstaged changes. One thing that I don't do super often is going back and amending commits. So what I mean by that is going back from an old commit and then modifying that commit. But you can go back and modify the last commit inside of Git UI. So let's say we want to add this file to our stage changes and let's go down to the stage changes now and then press C. Now, as you can see down the bottom here, if we go and press control A, that's going to say this is an amendment to a commit. So this time we can actually go and change what's in that commit. Let's just say this is a commit, I don't know, 2.0 or something like that. Please don't actually set commit messages like this. I'm just doing it for the sake of demonstration. Please use descriptive commit messages, especially if you're going to be working on public repos. So let's just amend that commit. And if we go over to the log now, as you can see, this is a commit 2.0. Okay, so now that we're on the log, let's say we want to see some extra details about one of these commits. Let's say we wanted to go see something on this one right here. So if I go and press enter on this, as you can see, it brings up a screen over to the side here. So we can see the author, we can see the date it was made, we can see the SHA hash, we can see the commit message, and we can also see the five files that were changed. Now, like with the diff screen, if I go and press right here, that's going to take us into basically a more complex screen. So we can actually go and see everything that was diffed in this specific commit. Now, generally, you're not really going to be looking at this too often, but if you do need to look at it, it is really useful to see. And like with what we had on the status screen, we can also go over to the diff screen on this one as well by just pressing right again. So let's say we want to see the diff for this one right here. So if I go and press right, as you can see, we can see each of the individual hunks. We can see what was added, what was changed and everything else going on in the file. Okay, so if we want to get out of this screen, we can't just go and press the left arrow. That's not actually going to work. What we have to do is go and press escape, and that will take us directly back to the log. Now, we also have two more screens left. We have stashing and stashes. Now, as you can see, I don't actually have any stashes for this repo, but under the stashing section, basically, we can go and create a stash. So I don't use stashes that often. I don't really think that at least for the stuff that I'm working on, they are really that useful. I'm sure there's some reason why you might want to use a stash, but for me, I haven't found a use for them. Anyway, if you want to go and make a stash, we can go and press S, and that's going to save all the files here as a stash. And we can also go and set the options for the stashes as well. We can say stash untracked and also keep index. Once again, I don't actually use stashes, so I'm not really sure what those settings do. If someone who uses them can explain that, feel free to do so in the comment section down below. But if you want to go and save the stash, you can go and set a type for it. We're going to say, I don't know, stash. I presume the type isn't actually important. And if we go and save that now, as you can see, all of those files have now been stashed. And if we go into the stashes, as you can see on master, we have a stash called stash. And that was made by Brody Robertson at this date. And it has this specific hash. Now we can go and apply this stash by pressing enter. Basically, that means the same thing as applying a patch. It's going to apply those changes to the repo. We can also go and delete the stash by just pressing capital D. So when you do that, it's just going to prompt you for confirmation. I'm just going to escape out of this and I'm actually going to apply the stash. So we can do that by just pressing enter. So as you can see, that stash hasn't actually been deleted. It's still maintained in here. But if we go back to status, then those files have actually been added to the repo from the stash. So that is actually everything you can do with Git UI. So if we go into the help menu, 
as you can see, basically we just went over every single key binding it has. Now, you might have actually noticed something missing there. Actually, a couple of very important things. So one of them is cherry picking. I don't use cherry picking that often, so for me, that's not that big of a deal. Another thing is changing branches and creating branches and just generally working with branches, which is one of the really important things about using Git. I don't know why that's missing. It is acknowledged on the GitHub page that that feature is only minimally supported right now. So on the latest version of Master, I believe you actually can do some basic stuff with branches, but on this version, you can't actually do that. And the other thing you don't have is working with remotes. So you have to do everything locally if you're gonna be using only Git UI. So this is what I mean by, I guess, a Git interface pushing you to work towards a specific workflow. So if you only use Git UI and you never touch Git just as commands, you won't ever make branches, you won't ever change branches, you won't ever merge branches, and you won't ever actually work with remotes, which all of those things are pretty basic stuff to use with Git. But if you are mainly just doing stuff on master and you're happy to just push the remotes just from the git commands, I guess there's no reason why you can't use this. Now, I'm perfectly happy just working with git directly with the commands. I don't really think that this adds that much functionality. So for me, I don't really think it's that useful, but it seems like a lot of people wanted me to cover git UI. So it's cool. I definitely think it's cool, but it's not the sort of application that I want to be using. So I think that is pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Monster, Joseph, Peter, Lee, Road, Tony, Donald, John, Mikkel, Spagin, Tais, and Zilva. If you want to go support my work, there'll be some links down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want and a small kickback for. Also, go check out my podcast. That is Take of a Tea, available on Library and YouTube for the video version and anywhere else for the audio version. Also, remember to go check out this channel, available on Library, BitChute, BitChute, and a bunch of other platforms as well. And remember to subscribe, ding the bell can down below, and remember to smash the like button and something else that I keep forgetting. So I think that is pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.